We've got a bit of an oddball slate tonight for Daily Fantasy Baseball, where all the pitchers are not super high strikeout guys. You look at the composition of this slate, and you don't see many guys who have the potential to put up 10, 11 strikeouts as we get at least from typically one guy each night in MLB DFS. So that does alter our plan of attack quite a bit because typically my approach is to just go to those guys and try to get the upside. Today, I might be able to play things a bit safer at pitcher. Prioritize high floor matchups and kind of go with just the best real world pitchers, which is typically not our approach. So we'll break down who that leads us to, where we're turning for tonight and more to get you ready for Friday night in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire here to break down Friday night's 10 game main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for two Today. Now, there are three games on this slate on the East Coast that have some potential for some rain that could lead to either delays or potentially postponements. The first one is in Baltimore for the Orioles and Mariners, and we have New York for the Rangers and Yankees and Philadelphia for the Phillies and the Mets. Of those three, it seems like the Philadelphia game is the one most at risk of delays or a postponement just based on the timing of the rain. Baltimore likely safest with rain clearing out right around first pitch. Uh, so. If they, you know, do a delay and then play, that could work out okay for them with no in-game delays. And uh, New York seems like the rain beginning there towards the end. So I feel personally right now, okay, using Baltimore and New York uh, players in those two cities. Philadelphia, I'm a bit sketchier on, especially because it's two pretty good pitchers there. So the de- risk of a delay becomes a bit heightened uh, when it's a pitcher versus when it's batter. So most concerned about Philadelphia, but then also would want to check back later on timing for Baltimore and for New York. We'll outline why that Baltimore game may be a bit important uh, in stacks later on today, and we'll get you set with the pitchers in just one second. But first, a reminder that baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win so don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today FanDuel official partner of Major League Baseball Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission must be 21 plus and present in select states first online real money wager only ten dollar deposit required Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Connecticut. 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. Logan Webb comes in with a salary of $10,200. He is your highest salary guy on this slate. Lucas Giolito is $10,000. Kode Senga potentially in the rain at $99. Shane Bieber, $96. Taiwan Walker facing off with Senga at $94. Chris Bassett, thankfully in the dome at $93. Kyle Gibson, $92 with Logan Gilbert at $9,000. Then we have Joe Musgrove, JP France, Brian Bayo, Emma Sheehan, Patrick Sandoval and James Caprellian as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, given the lack of strikeouts on the slate, I think we are allowed to go at guys who are good real world pitchers and in good real world matches. And we'll get to that here in a second. But I think the top guy, I just want the best overall pitcher on this slate. And to me, that guy is Logan Webb. Now, the matchup for Webb is not great. He's facing Arizona, and I don't like using better pitcher facing Arizona because they're a very good team. 114 WRC plus against righties, and they can run like crazy. So not a good matchup, but I really like Logan Webb. 
We're up to 15 starts this year, and Webb has a 3.19 a skill interactive ERA. That is the best on this slate by almost a half run in each pitcher's most relevant sample. The strike rate for Webb is 25%, which is not huge, but it's also not bad relative to others on this specific slate. And Webb will get a good number of ground balls. That all leads to a 3.11 ERA for him, and he can have big individual games. He's hit 11-plus strikeouts twice. Now, we've seen Webb face the Diamondbacks just once, and that game, he pitched really well. One run allowed across seven innings. Not a lot of strikeouts there, but that game was on the road, and this one is at home, and Webb does seem to get more strikeouts at home versus on the road. So on a lot of slates, if we have like a ton of high upside guys, maybe we're not getting to Logan Webb. But on this one, I just want the best real-world pitcher. And to me, that guy is pretty definitively Logan Webb. So despite a non-great matchup, I still think Logan Webb is the best pitcher on tonight's slate. Tend to me a very fair salary for a guy I feel great about despite not having a great matchup for tonight. The second pitching option is a guy who is in the mold of good real world pitcher in a high floor matchup. And that's going to be Joe Musgrove. So he's pretty similar to Webb where he's not a high strikeout pitcher. He's not a high strikeout matchup, but I think he's a good real world pitcher. And I do think that Musgrove has a better matchup overall than what Webb has. Musgrove is facing the Nationals. They do a good job of avoiding strikeouts but they don't do a whole lot with it because they have a 92 WRC plus against righties with a 135 ISO and a 33% fly ball rate. Musgrove has also himself had really nice batted ball data recently. Across six starts with more curveballs, he's led up just a 21% hard hit rate. He has the best mark in that department by 10 percentage points on this slate and a 28% fly ball rate as well. That's a big part of why Musgrove's ERA in this stretch is so nice at 2.88. Now, the strikeouts haven't really been there. He had just uh, one strikeout last time out, but has had some spike games, eight strikeouts in one of those games, and he's faced some low strikeout teams like Boston and Cleveland. So that taints the sample a bit, but he also gets a low strikeout matchup here. It all leads to a pretty low strikeout projection for Musgrove of 4.6. And that's not big, and typically, I'm not going to consider that on a full slate. But... Again, this slate is just different, where there aren't a lot of high strikeout options, and Musgrove, I think, is a good pitcher with the ability to exceed that number even in a non-elite matchup. So Musgrove is not unfadeable or anything. I don't think that by any means, especially given that he is uh, a pretty heavy favorite for tonight, which does correlate well with daily fantasy popularity, but... If you've got an inclination towards someone else, you can definitely follow it. But to me, it's going to be Webb 1 and Musgrove 2 as the top pitching options on tonight's slate over on FanDuel.com. Now, with Musgrove being the value play, we got the entire board open to us for that third slot. I think you could consider both Lucas Giolito and Brian Bayo facing each other. But I'm going to give Chris Bassett the slight nod here. Bassett's salary is $9,300. He's at home against the A's, and that does help matters quite a bit. Bassett has had some stumbles recently, and it's annoying because it seemed like he had righted the ship from his early season struggles, whereas Velo is down, didn't have great results. It seemed like he had gotten better, but I don't think he's fully regressed, I would say. His bad games in the recent stretch have come against the Rangers, Orioles, and Twins. Those are all offenses with some firepower. And all those starts were on the road. The one home start for Bassett in this time was against the Astros. He held them to two runs across eight innings. He also threw seven and two thirds shutout innings against the Mets on the road before that. So we've had recent good starts, which means our job is to basically make sure he hasn't broken between then and now. I will say that the velocity for Bassett did go down in that range of start, which was his most recent one, but it had been fine the start before that. So I think the velo dip does mean you can and potentially should avoid him if he's going to be the chalk in tournaments. And there is a good chance that he is, given how heavily favored the Blue Jays are for tonight. Um, And that's easier to go away from him with Webb and Musgrove also available here. But straight up, I'm going to rank Bassett third on my list. But I would say both him and Musgrove, you got the ability to deviate. I think they will probably wind up being both pretty popular. So I feel firm in ranking Webb first, despite the fact his matchup is not great. And then I will go Musgrove 2, Bassett 3. We'll talk about Brian Bayo as a potential pivot in things to watch later on. 
First, though, let's dive into the stacks for today, beginning at Coors Field with the Angels. They're facing Kyle Freeland, who had a stomach bug earlier on this week. So his start got pushed back, and that might have been advantageous for him because, weirdly, he's been a lot better at home than on the road this year. And so it could be a bit unnerving to stack against him with this game at Coors Field. Freeland at home this year, 3.19 ERA with a 5.92 ERA on the road. But those numbers last year in a larger sample were flipped, where he was much worse at home than he was on the road. And as always, we're dealing with small samples here. So unless we believe that Freeland has conjured more gravity and can make Coors Field less of a launch pad, I think we should expect him to have worse numbers at home than on the road over a larger sample. So to me, I'm not going to worry too much about the home road splits for this year specifically. Most recently, we've seen Freeland trying to correct the issues he has had by throwing more four seamers and fewer sinkers and hasn't worked out 10% strikeout rate doing that uh, for the full season. Freeland has a 4.48 ERA with a 4.87 expected ERA. He's letting up too much hard contact, too many fly balls, and the Angels are a team that can punish those because they have a 39% fly ball rate against lefties so far this year on the active roster. And it's Coors Field. It is one of the warmest temperatures of the night. And I think all in all, I don't see much to fear here. I don't buy into Freeland's success at home. And I don't buy into, um, you know, thinking that what he's done so far will be sustainable. So to me, the Angels are a great play and they are the top stack for tonight. I do want to dig into Hunter Renfro quick. He has not been himself this year. His ISO against lefties is muted at 198. His batted ball numbers in June are the exact same as they were the first two months as well. So it's not as if he's getting better because I always kind of want to look, you know, have you improved the past couple weeks or so? And we have not seen that from Renfro. He's been pretty much exactly the same. He is striking out a bit less, which could mean that he's sacrificing hard contact in order to put the ball in play more. The positive is that even with the decreased power numbers relative to do his baseline, they're still not bad. Like a 198 ISO is okay. So I'm still down to use him, especially with Renfro's salary at $3,500 for tonight. That for a Coors Field slate with a, or $3,100. Uh, that for a guy with his power at Coors Field, pretty tough to turn down. So I do like Renfro and I will be going there. I just am not as enthusiastic about it as I would be in previous years until seeing that salary at 31. I think that that can make us feel a bit better about that for sure. Number two stack is the Padres. They're facing Patrick Corbin, who I think we've seen recently we can stack against him still, especially when he's facing tougher spots. And he does get one of those tonight. We're up to 10 star sample on Corbin since he scaled back his slider usage. And in those 10 starts, he has a 4.45 ERA, which is fine. But there have been some rough games in there as well. He let up six earned runs to the Royals and four earned to the Marlins. And those two teams, not elite against lefties by any means. The reasons we've seen Corbin have down games is because he's still letting up too much hard contact. In this sample, this 10-star sample, his hard hit rate allowed is 47%, just a 14% strikeout rate, which means more balls in play, and when 47% of them are hard hits, that's a lot of hard contact. The Padres can hit lefties well. 114 a WRC plus there and a 197 ISO. They went bananas against Alex Wood last night, so... I think we got the green light to stack them once again here on this slate. I talked in yesterday's show leading into that wood match about how I was willing to be high on Juan Soto against lefties. And I'm still fine with him, but I would bump him down a bit extra here because lefties have an ISO below 100 against Corbin this year. And that's with teams keeping just their best lefties in the lineup to face him. And last year over a larger sample, that ISO was 143. So even when Corbin has really struggled, he's been good against lefties. And again, that's with teams putting just their best lefties out there to face him. So Soto is fine. I still think he'd be in the top four for stacks. But yesterday, I thought that he could push him below Manny Machado, Xander Bogarts. I think for today, especially with Machado going uh, going off last night, I would go Tatis one, Machado two, Bogarts three, and then maybe putting Soto in that mix uh, for the fourth spot. After those two teams, in the Angels and the Padres, the Jays are the next logical stack. And I don't mind them. We'll talk about them and things to watch. But I want to talk about a bit more contrarian option here instead, because the Angels are at Coors Field. The Padres are facing uh, Patrick Corbin tonight or after they put up like, you know, 37 runs. So both those teams will and should be popular. 
So I want to talk about a more contrarian option. So let's discuss the Baltimore Orioles. They're facing Logan Gilbert. And if you listen to the show all year, you know I like Logan Gilbert a lot. I've used him as a pitcher a bunch this year, and it's worked out a decent number of times. But Gilbert's in a funk right now. Across his past seven starts, he's throwing fewer forcing fastballs, and that approach has not worked. He's letting up a 44% hard hit rate with a 46% fly ball rate. He typically does struggle in those areas, so that part specifically is nothing new. But the strikeout rate is also down for Gilbert. It's at 21%. And that strikeout number being high for Gilbert is the key to masking his issues with hard contact. And that number is not where it needs to be right now. Gilbert predictably has struggled in this time with a 4.85 ERA. He let up six runs to the Angels, five to the Yankees. He has had some good starts, but it seems like there is upside in stacking against him here. The Orioles, very good team against righties with a 110 WRC+. plus. So we have incentive to be different tonight, given how chalky our first two stacks are. And the Orioles get us that differentiation in a matchup with a lot of hard contact. And they're a good offense themselves. So I think it all adds up to checking out Baltimore tournaments tonight and feeling pretty good about them. So to me, if you want to get a bit different without being totally dumb, I think the Orioles are your best stack uh, for tonight beyond those two we discussed earlier on. It does seem like Ryan O'Hearn is establishing himself as the cleanup batter for the Orioles against righties, which is kind of fun because the salary is still $2,600, but he has a 279 ISO against righties across 93 plate appearances. Now, We've seen this from O'Hearn and stretches before, which does mean it could stop, but it also means it's not totally out of nowhere. So I don't think it's totally fluky. I like O'Hearn as a value play, even if you don't go for a full stack here at $2,600. Uh, the Padres are pretty easy to stack, I would say, especially given the pitching salaries. But if you want to maybe get to Otani at $5,000 uh, in Coors Field, maybe O'Hearn is a value play to help you get there for tonight. Let's go now to things to watch. I said earlier, I don't mind Brian Bayo, and I wanted to expand on that here, given that Musgrove and Bassett have pretty good odds of being very popular for tonight. But Bayo is facing the White Sox. They had just a 90 WRC plus against righties this year. Not a big strikeout team, but they're about average there. It's so not a low strikeout team, and that's fine in this uh, slate. Bayo has a 3.93 skill interactive ERA across 11 starts, so we don't need as many strikeouts to hang on this slate which means I'm fine giving Bayo some thoughts as the third pitcher if you're worried about Bassett's velocity, worried about popularity, worried about Musgrove's popularity. I think all those things are valid, and uh, I would be okay going to Bayo if you're worried about that. I mentioned the Jays before for stacking. I think that they're a really solid consideration, and again, probably would rank them third straight up. They're facing James Caprellian, who is not a big strikeout guy, and it means they also get to face the A's bullpen. I am a bit lower here because Caprellian does a good job of keeping hard contact in check, but I think they're the Jays are definitely a fine option here. There's not quite as high in them as the Padres or the Angels, and I felt okay deviating for that third stack earlier on. The Rockies, obviously also at Coors Field, facing Patrick Sandoval, and you never want to fully ignore a team at Coors, but the Rockies are just so bad against lefties. They have a 60 WRC plus, woof, and... Sandoval does get a lot of ground balls. So I don't mind the Rockies for one-offs if there are guys you like against lefties here, but it's hard to get a full stack given how wretched they have been against lefties so far this year. So stacking options to me are going to be the Angels and Padres, uh, followed by the Blue Jays, but then the Orioles are a really fun contrarian option I do want to get to, especially in single-entry tournaments where I think people will focus primarily on the Angels and the Padres. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for today. The boring one, let's go Brandon Drury. I know his numbers against lefties this year have not been great, and we've seen him be kind of weird in that regard previously too, but it's Drury at Coors Field. I think this makes a lot of sense. I still believe in Mike Trout. This is not like an anti-Mike Trout thing. I think that the bad at ball data still tells us that the slump will not last forever, so still in on Trout, but let's go Brandon Drury as the boring home run call for today. For the fun one, I want to go Ryan O'Hearn again. A uh, matchup where he is facing guy who lets up a lot of hard contact and fly balls. O'Hearn has been hitting for power in the big league so far, right in the middle of that order. So we'll go with him as a fun one. So dinger calls for your Friday going to be Brandon Drury and Ryan O'Hearn.
That is all that we have here for today on the Solo Shot. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today and this entire week. Do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Also, check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and on the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire TVs, Apple TV, and Roku as well to get us along with covering the spread up and Adams, run it back all your favorite FanDuel TV shows along with your favorite FanDuel podcast as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight, and we'll talk to you once again Monday for another week of MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.